Hello everybody and welcome back to a, another version of the Chassis series video here. This is still with the King Crabs and I'm putting this one up because the round I thought was quite good. Uh, much like the other one that I've done for the King Crab, the HPG Manifold uh, level, which I got uh, pretty good damage on. I thought this was also a very good round for a King Crab and I did enjoy it. And it's a variant of I made a mistake with uh, building it because um, basically I've got uh, I've got two King Crabs. I've got the original King Crab, the Triple Zero, and I've got the Quad Zero. But I've got the Quad Zero built like a Star League, uh, sorry not Star League, a Comstar, Comguards version. That's the Double O One, which is what the chassis video um, is uh, alongside this one. Uh, so, but this is supposed to be the Triple Zero B, which is the Royal. Um, Star League era version of it, but I made one mistake. I stuck an ER large instead of a large laser uh, on it. Outside of that, the rest of it is correct, which is it has the LRM 15 with Artemis. That's literally the main difference, uh, to be honest. Uh, that, that's probably one of the biggest drawbacks with the original uh, lineup of King Crabs, uh, both in tabletop and uh, in Mech Warrior Online, is that buying them fresh out of the box. They're virtually the same mech, with very, very, very minor changes. Um, but yes, I, I totally hold my hands up. I built this thing on the Triple Zero Legendary, um, a loyalty model, because I didn't have a Triple a triple B, so, or a Double Zero B, so I, um, I cobbled it together as quickly as I could uh, for the recording, and I stuck an ER large on for some reason. But I remembered the LRM-15 with Artemis, so yeah. That aside. Um, the King Crab is uh, a phenomenal uh, assault mech. It was built uh, during the Star League era uh, at the request of uh, Al Alexander Kerensky, the, the Holy Father, as uh, the clans will see him, basically. Uh, essentially, he wanted something that would, if it came face to face with another mech of the same or similar tonnage, it would pretty much cripple it uh, as soon as possible. And so it was left to the companies who requested it from to up with that, and uh, yeah, that's what they came up with. It's uh, always had its main, its, its main party piece is its dual AC twenties, which there are other mechs that obviously bring dual AC twenties, but the King Crab. Uh, let's see, top of my head, when these things were produced, I think this was the only mech at the time on tabletop that came with dual AC twenties. But then later on, you had things like the Pillager. Which had dual AC 20s, and um, I'm sure there's probably one or two other mechs, uh, if not a lot more, that have got uh, dual AC 20s these days. But at the time, this thing was was rocking them, and uh, for TRO 2750, and it was a horrendous uh, killer of the battlefield. And the original looks really, really cool. It's a fantastic looking mech, uh, always has been. And it was uh, one of those mechs that suffered from the loss of uh, factories on many worlds uh, during the Succession Wars. And it was, uh, yeah, either it, the, remain, the remaining models of them went with Kerensky's lot over into the deep dark parts of space, uh, which would then end up being held in uh, different stockpiles within the clan territories, or a lot of them would actually be built by Comstar. Uh, because they secretly got one of the factories back up and running when they uh, sort of expanded their territory to, uh, around Earth. And that allowed them to surreptitiously make a few extras uh, in the meantime. Kept them going, you see. And uh, that, that's why they have so many ready for the Battle of Two Kids, which I think is probably one of the biggest surprises they had for the clans, because I don't think the clans expected the, the comm guards to have... Uh, quite the selection of uh, Star League era mechs that they did, especially spending a lot of time fighting the Sphere Forces, who, if they did have anything like this, it was extremely rare. Uh, especially anything that would still have something like um, you know, half the equipment they had. You see, the, the problem is um, Battletech had a bit of a problem with when they added the new tech. They did it, obviously, because from a design standpoint, you were just about to add the clans, and the clans were already really powerful, so they had to go, oh, and um, the Indosphere found all this tech, and oh, it's like the Star League, and oh, they've got warships and all that stuff, you think, logistically, they, 
the fact apparently that they could just immediately start building warships en masse and they could suddenly start upgrading and building all these new hacks within a couple of years. Uh, it's it's slightly unbelievable. It's you know it's not it's not a bad thing. Obviously they needed to balance it, and the Star League Gear attack is a really nice addition. It did open up a lot of new abilities, but yeah, uh, I, I'm pretty sure during the actual clan invasion, even though that new tech was available, you have to think that a majority of mechs that the clans were encountering didn't have things like double heat sinks, didn't have ER large lasers or ER PPCs or pulse lasers and stuff, these were models that were being built but not in huge numbers, not particularly huge numbers until uh, the end of the invasion onwards to probably, I don't know what, post-invasion era. And that's when you start getting things where pilots and forces were actively trying to get hold of clan tech. Anyway, gone off on a tangent. Uh, the, the King Crab, the Triple Zero B, uh, is uh, a really, really fun mech. Um, it's it's not much different from the Triple Zero, but that isn't a bad thing. Dual AC-20s, large laser, LRM-15s, it just has the Artemis 5 controls. Pretty much the main, the main selling point here. Um, and I got dropped by a Firestarter Ember because of uh, shitloads of ballistics, but yeah, that always happens. But I think my damage was pretty good. I think I got over 700 or close to, so or, or, if not 700, 500. It was good. It was good for me. It's good. You know, don't knock me, please, please don't knock me. Um, and so I, I think I did all right. Uh, but yeah, I totally hold my hands up. I wanted to put this match up. It's going in the chassis series thing, but it, I I completely understand that it's wrong. In a way, because it's an ER large and not a large laser. It shall not happen again. Um, yeah. Next one's going to be the Annihilators. And then uh, we're going to backtrack a bit. Look at this poor bastard. Look at this. None of his teammates were helping. He was running around in front of him and they wouldn't help him. Um, yeah, there's the Annihilators. And then it's the Night Star and the Osiris when they come out. Um, and then uh, I'm, I'm going to be done, virtually. The Thanatos doesn't have any other variants, but I will add the gameplay video for the Thanatos to both playlists, so it'll be there. And uh, then the Hellspawn, and uh, that's it for the, for 2017. I'll have all the chassis, all the Innisfear chassis mechs done for 2017. Oh my god! Then and, and then I'm on to the clan stuff. Oh uh, man, it's been a long road getting even this far, but uh, yeah, it's been fun. I, I do, I've, I've enjoyed the chassis series. Uh, it's it's drained my C bill account. Uh, quite considerably. You wouldn't believe the number of engines I've sold. Uh, I think at one point, uh, uh, to date, I've probably sold about 40 engines uh, to keep cash uh, going to buy the other mechs. So, yeah. Uh, mech packs help because they give you 6.5 million C bills for each one. I suppose that the main thing I need to do is probably just play a lot. But, uh, you know, it's. Oh, God, sometimes it's tough. So, it's, the, the game is raging through some of And, uh, yeah. Just trying to grind those sea bills. Ooh. But uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one. Uh, I, I shall uh, shall see you all next week. As I said, it's the Annihilators it should be uh, should be very slow plodding and uh, interesting. I, I'm not sure how long I'm going to do, but uh, yeah, should be fun. Anyway, have a good one. I've rambled too much now. Bye.